Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to Fat Cat Collections and today we have a grail piece for the collection and I don't mean a grail watch, I mean a grail leather jacket. So if you guys are new to the channel, welcome, welcome to Fat Cat Collections. This is a channel where I review all different kinds of products and I'm kind of obsessive so I like to collect multiple things but I tend to be very uh, compulsive and obsessive about the volume of things I collect. Now there's a lot of people out there with tons of money and I'm not the only one who's guilty of this but I'm a big time watch collector, big time cologne collector and big time leather jacket collector. Uh, one of really anything is just not enough. Once I get something I like I have to have different colors, I have to have different sizes and that's just kind of my personality. Now if you have not checked out my other reviews on leather jackets, I have about 40 to 50 leather jackets in my collection. That's not even mention other jackets that I really enjoy wearing as well. And I feel like nowadays there are so many great options for men and for women to get great clothing, great quality at a fraction of the cost that you would spend going into a brick and mortar store. Now, I'm not trying to be a horse dead here. And, you know, we all know that there are pros and cons with affordable goods, right? But a lot of times it really just comes down to a brand name making less money and less for the shareholders, right? That's really what it comes down to. You go into a big brick and mortar store at your local mall, you're going to pay, you know, $50 for a pair of Levi jeans nowadays, up to like $200 for some of these insane brands. Now, don't get me wrong, I've bought plenty of Rock Revival jeans, you know, $180 for a pair. That's a lot of money for most folks and a lot of money for me, really for anybody, no matter, unless you're filthy rich, right? So when it comes to you know affordable shopping, I tend to do a lot of my shopping online, a lot of like DHgate, a lot of uh, you know a lot of Chinese sellers, and a lot of um, you know Amazon products. Honestly, uh, what I found is that no matter what you spend on a product, the old saying that you get what you pay for is really something that just really needs to be put to bed. There are instances where if you buy something extremely cheap and maybe it's something that and I say cheap, I don't mean monetarily. I mean you you might buy a product that's extremely cheaply made, you really only know what you're gonna get until you actually buy it and use it, right? Or you depend on somebody like me to kind of share these products and give you guys my assessment. Now, again, this old saying, you know, get what you pay for, really is just, to me, it's something that's been, um, at one point, buying something, there are some things out there you might spend more money on and maybe get higher quality, but ultimately nowadays it is meaningless because that saying is being used for kind of to rationalize price on name brand. So if you were to go buy a genuine Python jacket by a brand like Gucci or a, or one of the many um, you know high end luxury high end luxury brands, you're going to be paying a shit ton of money for it. A perfect example is I watched Andrew Tate on one of his clips that just popped up on YouTube. I'm not an Andrew Tate fan. If you like him, by all means, watch who you like and watch who makes you happy. I find them quite repulsive. Um, but he did, I'll give credit where it's due, he did actually do this video, uh, this little short where he's like, oh, genuine, he was, again, Mr. Narcissist talking about how great he is, uh, you know, but he was buying this, uh, looking at a Python leather jacket, right? And it was in one, some famous, uh, very high, high-end store, and the jacket was $19,000. I can assure you that spending $19,000 for a Python jacket, or in this case, for you, about five to seven hundred dollars, uh, you're not getting anything much different, right? So keep in mind, again, just like with luxury watches, there is markup associated with luxury brand names. Okay, just kind of keep that in mind. So again, the old saying, "You get what you pay for." We really need to put that to bed. Okay, so. Let's talk about the jacket today. This is a piece that I've been wanting for quite some time. Ever since seeing movies like um, like Zombieland, where I think his name's Dallas, I haven't seen the movie in a while, is rocking a snakeskin jacket. I don't believe it was Python, it might have been Rattlesnake in that. To, to characters like Crocodile Dundee, to uh, the most recent, which I've noticed with shopping, um, you know, with different sellers and a lot of these different Chinese companies, I've noticed there's more of a push for the snakeskin since one of the newest, I think it was Fast X, Jason Momoa is rocking two amazing, like, uh, really exotic jackets, a crocodile or alligator jacket towards the end of the movie, and then I think more towards the middle of the movie or maybe the beginning, it's been a while since I've seen it, he is rocking a, a Cafe Racer Python jacket in what I would consider sort of like a bleached uh, finish, which is what I believe this is. Now, 
I've never, I don't know if there's albino pythons. I don't know um, anything about the tanning process or what goes into it. But oh, generally, I don't think pythons have this kind of, uh, kind of bleached white slash charcoal and gray uh, kind of vibe. It looks like it's been a, sort of a bleached hide or a bleached uh, skin. Regardless of what it is, there are different options. If this is in your color, you can get it more of a natural, like the browns and the tans. You can get it black, purple, and we're gonna, I'm going to give you guys a link in the description for you to check out V-Bags Corner. Uh, this is the seller I bought this from. Uh, it's a seller based out of, I believe, Indonesia. This jacket was actually shipped from France. Uh, when I asked the seller why is it being shipped from France, she stated that it has to do with where their warehouse is located. I don't know what goes into bringing an exotic good into the country. Uh, however, uh, whatever you know, whatever requirements uh, are necessary, that's between you know her and of course um, you know. I guess the different regulations. So I can assure you if it's on Etsy, uh, they're following the proper protocol. So uh, what are you getting with this? So amazing Python skin. I've been wanting a jacket like this for quite some time, like I stated, and I have many different jackets in my collection. Um, there are lots of different leather jackets you can get that are actually like a faux snake, but ultimately, um, at the end of the day, there's really no substitute. And this is one of these examples where you just can't duplicate the authentic type of material, right? If we look at uh, jackets like my, um, I, th I think it's some kind of Italian leather company, I ordered a goat skin alligator embossed jacket I reviewed years ago, check that video out. That video, you know, that jacket is extremely realistic, right? The way they emboss that particular hide, um, you really really can't tell the difference unless you really have a real trained eye. Um, you can also duplicate um, and I'm not saying that, like, the idea is not to buy that and to fool people. Um, I, I, you know, when somebody asks me, is that alligator? I'm like, no, it's goat. It's been embossed. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, however, when it comes to that type of material, I don't see the point in actually spending the money on a real alligator or crocodile because the embossing looks so realistic. Now, when it comes to snake, there really isn't any substitute. You can get, and I just recently bought one from like Fashion, I think it was Fashion Nova, a python, a fake a vegan leather, a pleather jacket. Um, it's quite amazing how they print it and how it gives you a kind of a, a similar look, but you're just not getting the texture of the scales of the python skin. You're just not getting the real look. And there's something to be said about the authentic style of jacket here with something like this. Um, when you wear... And I don't want to make this always about watches, but when you wear, um, for instance, when I wear, if I had, when I've tried on a Rolex before, and I compare that to like, a, you know, a, a DH Gate Special, or I compare that to a Pagani Design, when I put either of those watches on, I don't really feel any difference between the authentic Rolex and these homage watches or some of the uh, DH Gate homage watches. Uh, you know, to me, they feel great quality and they look exactly the same. So I could never rationalize the price on a luxury brand watch, right? But with something like this, there really is no substitute for the authentic. Nobody, to the best of my knowledge and the years I've been looking, has ever created a faux snakeskin leather jacket that is identical to the real hide, right? And so at one point, I'd always said that I one day I am going to spend upwards of $1,200 uh, in order to get a Python jacket. Fortunately, I found V-Bags Corner on on, on Etsy, and again, the link's in the description. This is an incredible seller. The communication is fantastic. And a lot of times, my experience dealing with, whether it be sellers on DHgate, or Amazon, or really any uh, shop, online shopping mall, there's always a huge turnaround in getting a response, right? When it comes to VBAG's Corner, it's like within the same day. Sometimes it's within an hour. This seller is actively engaged on the platform. And if you have a question, she's going to respond. So why did I get this jacket for the price I got? Now, you won't be able to get this jacket for this price. I had a special arrangement with her. Uh, one, to do a video and to share the amazing quality of the items she's producing. But also... Um, this was a jacket that she had made for somebody else, and I guess that deal fell through. I don't know the logistics as to what happened, but she had one size, a medium, and uh, I was looking. I, I pitched my idea with her. Of course, I paid a lot less than you're going to pay, but I still paid for the jacket. The great thing about it is that me and the seller have a relationship, and you will be seeing the black version uh, in the next, I'd say, about two weeks to about four weeks. I'm going to pick that up as well. Um, this is exactly what I look for in the way a jacket should fit. So, if you are 
are in the market, whether it's the black version, the purple version, uh, whatever, mainly the jacket. She doesn't have a huge selection, but you're going to have the Brando style jacket, which is what this is, where you have the two lapels, the flaps, and the belt. Traditional, uh, gr I like to say greaser. 50s style leather jacket, police style motorcycle jacket. It's one of my favorite cuts, but it is for a specific kind of guy, right? It's a very youthful look. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. It's, it's, I think that you can be any age and wear anything, but typically when we see, uh, you know, jackets like this, they they are associated with bikers. Um, you know, again, that's why it's coined the Brando jacket for that particular time, that particular actor. But really, it's something you anybody can pull off. It definitely has more of a... I'd say badass style to it than if you wear a, more of a cafe racer. A cafe racer style jacket is just kind of like collarless. They're great too, don't get me wrong. She makes those as well. But to me, that's more of a, a universal jacket. You can wear that with like dress slacks. Uh, you know, if you throw it over, you know, get some dress clothes on, you, you, you'll you look out of place wearing that jacket with some dress slacks. Whereas this, it just doesn't match. This is definitely more of an informal, this is more of a jeans, Dickies style of jacket, if that made any sense at all. So, um, love the cut on these. It is one of my favorite jackets. And what I really also appreciate uh, is that when she sent me the measurements and she was specific about, hey, make sure it fits you. Because uh, one thing that I find kind of... Um, you know, a little bit stressful when you're buying something online, especially something you're spending good money on like this. Um, and even if you're spending $100 from Amazon or eBay, a lot of times it might be challenging to get a refund, right? And I mean, you may have to send it back. You may have to pay for the shipping. Um, a lot of sellers aren't going to go ahead and say, hey, let me send you two sizes. You pick the one that fits best. This is not the, the way it works. And, you know, if you go into a brick and mortar store, absolutely you get to try on different sizes. So that's the advantage find one that fits you. Ultimately, I wear small and mediums. Um, sometimes I'll get a small and it'll be it'll be just too small with a jacket like this. This is technically a medium, but I would say it's in between. We'll call it a medium. It's really in between. So for my body size, just to give you guys an example, I'm about 175 pounds, um, five foot eight inches tall. This is honestly the best fitting jacket I think think one of the best fitting jackets that I own in my collection of over 40. Uh, it fits me absolutely perfect. Another thing I really like about it is the sleeves aren't too long. Most jackets that you buy off the rack or you buy, um, you know, even from Amazon, don't get me wrong, not, not this thing, love them, wear them, but they tend to have longer sleeves. And the idea that I think is when you're on a motorcycle, because they are more motorcycle style jackets, you're lifting your arms up. And when you lift your arms up, you're exposing your wrist. And so the longer sleeve helps to just kind of keep the wind out. With this, I'm not going to be riding a motorcycle probably ever again. Uh, I used to, but not anymore. Um, you know, this is exact the perfect sleeve length for my body. Again, that's just, you know, this is going to be different for you depending on your body, but um, it fits flawlessly. Now, the medium, for my chest size, my waist size, my back size, it is a little snug, and this is how I prefer a jacket to fit. For me personally, I like my clothes to fit more snug and fitted. You may not be the same. I'd probably upgrade to, or not upgrade, but I'd probably upsize to like a large. But you're just going to have to work that out with the seller if it is something that you're interested in. She will definitely send you the measurements. Make sure you have that good communication with her. Measure a jacket that you have that fits you the way you like and just kind of base it off that. Uh, for me, because this is a jacket that does not have any kind of zip-out liner, um, if this did, this would be way too tight on me. So this is really uh, kind of pushing the size for me. Um, I probably wouldn't be wearing a heavy sweater under this or a heavy shirt. This is really a t-shirt t-shirt kind of jacket. Uh, but it is absolutely stunning. The quality is exceptional. Um, the, I mean, just check out the, I mean, the python is just so awesome. Now, this is a coat that not every single person is going to wear. It's not a style for everybody. It's very loud. Some might even say obnoxious. But this is definitely something that fits my personality. And I absolutely love it. Um, there's not really too much else I can say about it. I don't really know, you know what goes into making this. Um, I know from... Or from my understanding, she hand makes these, and there is a little bit of a turnaround if it's not something that is already made. In my case, shipping only took about, I think, two or three weeks. Uh, again, she provided tracking. She, I mean, uh, it just every step of the way eliminated any concern I had that I wasn't going to get a jacket. She has a, a bunch of reviews 
on her Etsy store. Tons of sales. So rest assured, if you do buy something from her, you're you know you you definitely can have the confidence that you're going to get a high quality item, um, and that you're going she's going to deliver on her on on her agreement with you, right? Now the only thing again I would be concerned with, and this is for any online seller, is really communicate with her about the sizing. Um, I would think that if you are just to give you guys kind of my build, and I like to mention this in almost every clothing item I review. Again, 175 pounds, a five foot eight. Um, I don't I don't know what my arm length is. I don't really know, you know, what my measurements are. I think I'm like a 44 in the chest. Again, I'll wear it just depends on what I'm what I'm wearing, you know. With a leather jacket, you do have to be a little bit careful with not getting anything too small because you, you won't want to wear it. It's gonna be too tight. With this Perfect, absolutely perfect, not too big, not too small. It fits snug, it fits like a glove, and I just can't be happier. So I would say if you were a guy who is five foot eight, I would say even a guy who's taller, because if you look at this particular jacket and the length on the back, you know, it's not super short, which I was kind of concerned on the by looking at the pictures on there. Some of the models she has, it makes the jacket look super short because they're wearing a really long t-shirt. Uh, just kind of put that out of your mind. Look at how it looks on me. Um, and you can see it's it's just right, I'd say probably about two or three inches past my waistline. So again, a perfect length. Um, what else? The sleeve length, I think if you're taller and you are, let's say, let's say you're, I would say if you're like, you know, let's say you're, I don't know, five foot ten or eleven. Depending on your arm length, the sleeves might be a little short on you. Now I think though, if you are gonna order this, I think she's gonna custom make it. So you can kind of, you know, tailor it to, to to your body. But again, keep in mind, make sure uh, that you can go get measured all day long, right? You can go into a you know local uh, uh, suit store, get it, get your body measured, and, and give her that information. But if you like your clothing to fit a certain way, I would recommend if you have a jacket, a leather jacket that fits you already that you really like, or just any jacket that, that you have that you like, measure that and kind of base off how you how a jacket that you already own fits you. Because if you just merely go off what they recommend or what any seller recommends, I, I never I'm always disappointed if I if I kind of base my decision on that. So Again, find a jacket that fits you good. Work with her. Take the measurements. Uh, usually, they'll be you know shoulder sl to sleeve length or to the cuff length, um, length from the top of the collar to the lower portion of the back, and then of course, uh, usually they'll measure from chest one way. So you know, keep in mind if you are if you have a jacket that's measuring you know uh, twenty, that's a forty uh, mil a forty inch forty inch diameter circumference. Man, I'm messing up. Sorry, I'm sweating right now. Um, what else? Um, so just, again, keep that in mind. And keep in mind, too, if you have a jacket that you're kind of basing your decision off, that's, let's just say, got a heavier liner or a zip-out liner, you, you might want to find a jacket that's thin. Remember, all we're really looking at, there's really no insulation in this. This is basically the hide and sort of like, an in, uh, like a uh, silver silk lining in this. So it's very thin. And again, if you are going to wear a jacket with something underneath, then I'd recommend upsizing. Again, you're just going to have to kind of work it out with her and uh, just do your homework when it comes to what fits you well. Take some measurements and just kind of think about it. Um, what else? Reach out to me, of course. I'll try to give you, you know, my best recommendation. But what, if I can give you anything from this video, it's just you are not going to find a jacket of this quality for this price anywhere I mean is absolutely incredible and sometimes I will say that I've you know dealt with other companies before uh, once they start to really build traction and they start to really sell if there's a you know supply and demand dictate price so if more and more people start buying these the price will start to go up so just kind of keep that in mind as far as being competitively priced right now you know she is the most competitively priced genuine snakeskin jacket seller that I've ever come across and I've been looking for years and years. So super excited, really look forward to wearing this out. And again, a jacket like this, something to think about as well if you're looking at other brands or even looking at other jackets and snakeskin isn't your thing. Let's just put V-Bag's corner out of the picture for a second. Make sure that you know if you buy a jacket that's kind of exotic, this is the kind of thing you might want to wear 
Um, you know, if you are a very social guy, you might want to wear this indoors to a club. I don't know. I'm not going any clubbing at my age, but I'm just trying to think of my younger self. And if I was going to a club, I'd want to wear this in and, and just kind of rock this. And so what's nice about having a jacket that's exotic with no liner is it's more adaptable. You can put a t-shirt under it and you can wear it indoor without necessarily sweating your ass off. It's not really meant to be a winter coat. It's more of like a spring, fall type of jacket. So absolutely stunning if I haven't mentioned that a thousand times already. If I can help you guys in any way, by all means, drop me a comment, drop me an email. Uh, as always, links are in the description to the seller. Um, and I do want to give a shout out and a thank you to, again... <laughs> Mr. James Perez, one of my subscribers. Uh, it's interesting how YouTube can kind of build uh, relationships with people from different parts of the country and world. And, you know, there are a lot of creepers out there, but, you know, it takes time to kind of build that rapport with somebody. James uh, has been an awesome subscriber, and I really enjoy kind of exchanging some emails with him. And, you know, he was super generous over this last Christmas. He went ahead and sent me a bill, and, uh, you know, it was originally for a watch. Uh, but, you know, I have so many, I went ahead and put that money towards the price of this jacket. So, um, thank you, James. Super generous, as, as always. And, uh, gosh, what else? Uh, you guys, happy holidays. All that shit. Take care.